for those introductions, and thank you for everybody for being here today. I really appreciate the Walker Institute for funding our research, and for everybody who's participated and helped bring this all together. Really appreciate it. And on behalf of the Walker Institute, we are excited to share our research, what we've, what we've come up with and what we've been working on for this last, from this last semester. And so, this is a picture of everybody that is on the, the research team. You can kind of see them around the table and their names go in order. So if you kind of go around, you can kind of see all the people who have already been introduced. That's our team, that's where we meet every Friday and we just have a blast talking about education and, and teacher effectiveness. And this is an outline of what I'm gonna kind of go through today. So we'll, we'll start with national education policy. We will then talk about a western states region that we picked to focus our research on. And then we'll narrow in on Utah and the Utah Educator Effectiveness Projects in Utah. And then we will conclude by explaining the, the, where we're going with the Walker Institute research team. And so we're excited. <laughs> so, so beginning in policy, uh, the Elementary Secondary Ed Education Act flexibility, what it is, is the Department of Education invited each state to create a plan that would give flexibility on the requirements for the No Child Left Behind Act of 2001. And so states would come up with a plan that was designed to improve educational outcomes for all students, to close achievement gaps, to increase equity, and to improve the quality of instruction. And so this flexibility is pretty important to states that were, that were held to the No Child Left Behind um, Act requirements. Now there's a little bit, it's a little more rigorous for, for education. And so within that policy, the way they have to, the way that they practice this, um, because states within this policy have to prove that they have a plan for measuring teacher effectiveness, and also a plan for teacher professional development. And so you can see listed there uh, four different ways that they are connecting those policies and, and practicing them. So we have teacher preparation and educator evaluation and professional development, early career mentoring. So these are all ways we're taking those policies and, and practicing them here. Um, Department of Education Secretary Arne Duncan, February of this year, addressed Congress. And you can see that bottom quote says, great principals lead great schools, and great teachers do miraculous things with children. And so with the flexibility that states now have, they have multiple measures of growth and gain within the requirements of this, of this new flexibility. And that's important. This is one of the most important, I think, slides here is that we know that great, te that great principals lead great schools and that great teachers do miraculous things with children. And that's really the focus and the passion of the research team is that we care about education and we, we want to improve education. And so that's our whole focus and kind of where the passion comes from on this project. As you can see there, those are different measures of growth. We have No Child Left Behind Act on, in the red. And then with the new flexibility, now that we have all these measures of growth that we're looking at compared to what it was. So this is significant policy that's been passed. This is a map of the United States, and we can see the states in blue are those who have been approved for this flexibility. And the states in green are still under review. Um, they, they requested, and they will have an answer soon. And so we're keeping a close watch on these states. I mean, I'm talking daily. We're looking at what these states are doing. Because just a, as a couple days ago, um, we learned that Wyoming and Texas filed for an extension. And so we will, we will learn as of the 15th of April uh, where they're at. That's when the extension was um, put into force, till April 15th. So we're keeping a watch on these guys. We want to know which states have this flexibility who are meeting these requirements. So we've talked about policy. Now we're going to go and narrow it into an intermountain western region that the research team picked. And these are the states that surround Utah and also including Montana. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to use Utah as our unit of analysis, but we're going to compare the education funding and the teacher effectiveness programs with the states that border Utah. And the reason why we pick these states is that they share common geographic and demographic challenges with the school age population. So we can have a good comparison of how the states are doing. All right, so we're gonna spend just a few extra minutes on this slide. This is original research that the team is excited about. And it took a lot of hard work to bring all this together. A lot of phone calls, uh, reading budget plans, compiling a bunch of research together and create and um, doing some, some math and coming up with all these percentages here. And so we can see there's, there's some variation in the school age population for um, K through 12. Utah is in the highest, as you can see, there's 600,000 uh, school age uh, school-aged children. As compared to the other states that surround Utah, we have a spending per pupil, which is the lowest in the nation, at $6,064. And so that's, that's pretty low compared to the states that are surrounding Utah that are very similar, but I feel like we do a really good job with the money that we have in Utah. So education is important <laughs> to Utah. So, and also from our state budget, we're just under $5 billion in education. And you can see that we are, we're the mean there with the amount of money we are receiving for our state education budget. And 9% of that budget is coming from the federal government. So, and you can see there's some, there's some significant differences between Wyoming with a lower population. Now they, have a, they receive a higher amount of education dollars from the federal government. But the most important part of this entire table is that last, that last portion there spent on teacher improvement programs. And so just as Arne Duncan was saying that great teachers do great things with children, we know that if the, where we're focusing our attention on improving teachers is important to look at. And so this percentage of 0.39% is what we're spending here in Utah on improvement programs or improving teachers within Utah. So that's important to look at. And it's also important to know that New Mexico, you see an NA there, we are, as of yesterday, we got a phone call from them, and so we're, we're this is up to date, we're, we're changing this table, I've changed it a million times. So, we have New Mexico, we'll be getting those numbers in probably within a couple hours after we present. So, we're watching them. This just gives a, an overall perspective of the spending per pupil. The lighter the color, the lesser amount that we're spending and the darker the color, the more we're spending on education per pupil um, for the nation. So you can see Wyoming is an outlier in our, in our Intermountain Western region that we picked. So. Okay, so we've gone from policy to region, now we're going to go into to Utah. So we have a population just under 3 million. Of that population, we have 21% of, our, of that is school age population. That's a, that's a large percentage of school-age population children compared to the other states that are surrounding. We have 26,000 teachers and 63. Those 63 are important as well. And then we have 41 school districts, high school graduation rate of, of 90%, and that's 5% higher than the national average in Utah. And, and so we're doing good. We're doing good there but it's not good enough, right? <laughs> we want that 10% and we need, we need all the high school graduates we can get. We also need bachelor's degrees and education is important. And so we, we are 1% higher than the national average for bachelor's degree, degrees. Governor Herbert with Prosperity 2020 would like to see that number higher at 66%. And that's, that also includes in that 66% that Governor Herbert is um, portraying is, also includes in that is associate's degrees, licenses, certificates, and so that number would be closer to 43, so we're closer to our goal than, than that 29, we're at the 43%. Alright, so this is where we're receiving our, our funding for education the revenue. We receive 49% of it from state, 35% uh, from local sources, and then other is district bonding, so that's at 7%. And again, we receive 
of our funding um, from the federal government. So that's the $5 billion we we're bringing in. Now we have the $5, million, $5 billion that we're, we're spending. So a large portion of it is going to salaries and benefits for teachers. So around 64% of our total budget is going to the funding for, or the salaries for teachers. To kind of give you an idea of where we're at, we call this our Technicolor Dreamcoat slide. <laughs> so it's very colorful and fun. We have the average uh, monthly salary for a teacher with, with a bachelor's degree in Utah is at $2,761. So that's the average per teacher with a bachelor's degree. But there's a difference. There's from North Summit District to Kane District, there's a difference of $655.08. So there's some, there's some variance in how much we are paying our teachers depending on where they're living. And it's, I mean, that's, that can be a lot of money for a teacher that's starting out. That could be a difference of $8,000 depending on where you're at. So that just gives you an idea of where salaries are going for teachers. And so we have other objects here and expenditures. We're taking care of our property. We have supplies. You know, teachers need pencils and paper and all sorts of supplies. Now we need iPads, right? <laughs> and then we have, so that's kind of the expenditures. But the most important part of this, of this pie chart is that 2% that's spent on professional and technical services. Now within that 2% is, that includes the teacher effectiveness programs. So that's, a, that's important. If we want good teachers, that's the amount, of, that's where we're spending that money on.